you and praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Tim Wangi, and I bless the Lord for the opportunity, the privilege, the mandate, the assignment, the open door to minister to in order to bring it about as it is this day to save many people alive. Now, therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spoke kindly. Whatever they had purpose for evil, the Lord turned it for his good. And this morning, I want to talk about the four P's of destiny. The four P's of destiny. The four P's of destiny. And it is my prayer that one day you reach where David, I mean where Joseph reached and said, whatever you had purpose for evil, life is a mystery. There are challenges we go through, but we don't understand them. But one day, these dotted lines will count. We begin by seeing a young Joseph in the book of Genesis. And this young boy is a dreamer. And this young boy dreams two significant dreams. And these dreams are very prophetic. The first dream, he saw sheaves of wheat and he saw them bow under him. That was the first dream. And the second dream, he dreamt and he saw the sun, the moon and the stars bowing. Remember when you read the Bible and see the grammar, it was the father who said, do you mean that we are going to bow unto you? And these were two dreams that were very different and very unique. And these dreams communicated the prophetic destiny of Joseph. And so the first thing is that Joseph was the son of Rachel. And Rachel was the wife that, that Jacob loved. And Joseph carried the nature of his father because his father was a dreamer. And so let's go to the details of these two dreams. So the first dream was a prophetic image that God is going to raise Joseph as a family leader in his own family. And the dream of the wheat was a picture of Joseph becoming a leader in his family that his brothers and parents will bow. But the second dream did not have any family connection. The dream of the star, the moon and the stars and the sun was connected to Egypt because the sun is a ruler the moon is a ruler the Bible says I've set the sun to rule over the day and the moon to rule over the night and in prophetic decodes or coding the sun represents authority secular and also the moon and the stars so Joseph had twofold dreams I don't know whether he understood it, but one was about Egypt bowing and the other one was about the family bowing. And the moment this dream came alive, it opened a door of attack because you are mysterious to men. You are mysterious to the devil until the day you are revealed by prophecy. My goodness. The devil doesn't know who you are. He doesn't know what you carry. Sometimes it takes prophetic utterance to announce that Joseph, you are a great man and the sun, the moon and the stars will bow. And the devil understands that language. He knows you are being raised and you will rule, you will rule Egypt. And the Bible declares at that time the brothers were very against him. And they plotted to kill him. And he had a coat of many colors. And that coat is a sign of covering. Because it was made by the father. He had a coat of many colors. And they came to this place and they said, listen, let's kill him. But the Bible says that they agreed not to kill him. And they threw him into a dry well. And that was a pit. That is the first P. They threw him into a pit, into a dry well. What does that mean? It was a place of hopelessness. A place of despair. A place of quitting and giving up. And when they drew him and threw him in that particular pit, the Bible declares that indeed Judah saw the Ishmaelites. They were coming and they were headed to Egypt. 
And it was Judah who said, let us take him out of this dry well and sell him among these men, the Ishmaelites, that are going to Egypt. You see, I'm trying to decode the scripture that says, whatever happens for evil. Listen to me. That is one statement that is mystery. You see, it is the brothers that drew him, that threw him in that particular well that was without water. And then who were the Ishmaelites? My goodness, the Ishmaelites, this was the mistake of Abraham and the mistake of Haggai. So God found good in that mistake. There was a divine assignment on a mistake that was committed by Abraham and Haggai. Because out of Abraham and Haggai came Ishmael. And the seed of Ishmael became the Ishmaelites. And it was the Ishmaelites that were passing. And it was Judah prophetically. That name Judah, the name Judah means praise. It was Judah that lifted Joseph from the well and presented him to the mistake of Abraham my goodness you the ways of our God cannot be understood there is somebody listening to me this morning you are in a pit may Judah lift you may your praise lift you up from that pit and may the Lord begin to place you on the pathway and the coordinates of your destiny it took the intervention of Judah and the mistake of Abraham for the man to be propelled to destiny and the Bible says the next place he landed was in Potiphar's house now remember he had a garment of many colors when they took him in the pit when they took him in the pit they took away the garment because every level of your life will always usher you to a new level of covering every level has a, its own dress code so the garment of many colors is taken out and the man is sold as a slave and these people take him to the markets of Egypt and there in the markets the slaves stood naked but favor and destiny was upon Joseph and the Bible says very clearly he was taken by Potiphar now who was Potiphar Potiphar was a statesman he was very close to the throne and very close to the palace so why was Joseph there he was there to understand the palace etiquette and palace protocol and the Bible says he began to rise in rank and began to rise in rank until he came to the place of Potiphar's wife. He was made a leader because anytime you're promoted, automatically you become visible. He was made a leader and there was visibility. And because of visibility, he began to attract other things and Potiphar's wife saw him. And the Bible says he was handsome, he was good looking. And everybody in life, you will go through Potiphar. What is Potiphar? In the house of Potiphar, you have the garments of a slave, but in you, you still have destiny. You have one option, to stand in God and in the promises of God, to stand in the vision and in the prophecy that is upon your life, or to, to compromise and end up as a slave forever. Joseph was a slave to Potiphar, and Potiphar handed over everything except his wife. And Potiphar's wife, for me, if you ask me, that challenge of sexual immorality was an opportunity to check on character. Many people, destiny, have gone down with their trousers. People that had big dreams, people that had big visions, people that were anointed to be great globally, but they never passed the second P. It is called Potiphar. Joseph looked at Potiphar's wife. And said, how can I do such a thing? Genesis 39 verse 9. Against my God. Because there was a relationship that was greater to Joseph than the relationship that existed between him and Potiphar. He knew whatever I'm about to do is not a betrayal to Potiphar, but it is a betrayal to the Lord who has called me, anointed me, and who has my life at hand. It is my prayer that somebody will pass through Potiphar's house and come out victorious. We live in an age where sexual immorality is on the rise. We live in an age where people are getting jobs through sponsors, promotions by sleeping around and sleeping with the bosses. You open a door with the sexual keys. You will need to sustain that door with sexual keys. Listen to me carefully.
If Joseph would have slept with Potiphar's wife, he would still remain a slave of Potiphar, but a boyfriend to the wife. But the title slave will still remain. And the Bible says that Joseph fled. And in Potiphar's house, he left the slave garment. Jesus. He left the slave garment. And he fled. And the next thing, he's in prison. And in prison, that's the next P. He's given the prison attire. And because of the destiny that the Lord has given him, God must permit him to deal with royalty and deal with the least in the community. God must permit him to eat with kings and also to go low in society because this man is about to be the biggest leader in the territories of Egypt. And leadership is a product of identification. The next thing he ends up in the, in the prison the law still gives him favor with the prisoners. And even in that prison, he gains favor, he's made a leader. He's still in the garment of a prisoner. And there, of course, the heart is well tested. The man is still loving the Lord. And the Bible says one day there was an opportunity. Some of the people that served the king had dreams. And Joseph had the ability to interpret the dreams. And one of them was restored, the other one was killed. And the man forgot about him. Because our destiny is not in the hand of every man. Our destiny is in the hand of El Elyon. My goodness, our destiny is not in the networks that we have. We may have phone numbers of senior men. But unless the Lord opens that door, your efforts are insufficient and incapacitated. And it is my prayer that the Lord God will take you where he has ordained for you. And the appointed day came. The king had a dream he could not interpret. And there was a man who had a dream he could not fulfill. I want you to look at this scenario. The king has a dream he cannot interpret. And Joseph has a dream he cannot fulfill. The king needs a man to interpret his dream. And Joseph needs a man to help him fulfill the dream. And here is a divine opportunity. He's called by the king. The garments of the prison have to go down. Because the next level, he can't face the king as a prisoner. He must face the king with another garment. And he's given the royal garment. And he shows up before the king. And in the process of solving the dream of the king, he was creating a pathway for the fulfillment of his own dream. These are two people. One has a dream. He cannot interpret. One has a dream he cannot fulfill. And they meet on a platform. As he is interpreting the dream, he's opening the door for the fulfillment of the very dream that he had. And when he came up with a proposal of seven years of harvest, save, and seven years of famine, let them eat on the harvest, the king looked and said, who can manage this unless Joseph? And the king said, I've given you everything in my kingdom except my throne. He was even given the king's signet ring, which was a sign of the man that is appending legislation in that particular territory. And he ascended and became the prime minister and the ruler of Egypt. And it is believed it is Joseph that the, he pioneered the concept of the banking system. You save in plenty and consume when you don't have a lot. Destiny will face these four P's. You will go through the pit. I don't know if you are there. You will go through Potiphar, the place of accusation, false accusation. You will go through the prison. But the moment you know that there is a crown and a palace for you, you will not compromise on any area of your life. The, some of you are listening to me are already in the pit. I want to tell you, don't give up. Allow Judah and the mistake of Abraham. To usher you. Some of you are in the place of compromise. Temptations are all over. You used to be a man of prayer. You used to be a giver. You used to be a servant in the house of the Lord. Now you have been promoted. You are testing the delicacies of the house. Women are all over. Men are all over. I want to tell you, don't compromise. Don't compromise. Sometimes we are accused because of standing right. Some of you are in prison. You look at the Lord and wonder, how can I be here? I served you. I cried unto you. Lord, I've never compromised. How comes the wicked are prospering? Lord, I've, I've committed my life. Stay there. 
a divine opportunity is coming. And it is my prayer that all of you will come to the palace. When he was in the pit, he lost the cloth of many colors. When he went to Potiphar, he lost the cloth of a slave. When he left the prison, he lost the garments of a prisoner. When he met the king, he got a royal garment, a covering of royalty. And true to the dream, the king and the leaders of Egypt, they all bowed. You have a destiny. You have a destiny. Arise, shine, manifest. There are pits ahead. There is Potiphar ahead. There is prison ahead. But there is a palace. Someone shared and said the reason why the front mirror of a car is bigger than the side mirror is because where you are going is more powerful than where you are coming from. Father, I bless you because of your sons and daughters. Lord, I thank you because there are people watching today. Some are in the pit. Others are in Potiphar's house. Others are in prison. But above all, we know there is a palace ordained for us because, Lord, you are the one who coordinated the pathway of our destiny. May we stand where Joseph stood as he faced the brothers and say that whatever you had purpose for evil, the Lord turned it for good. There are things in our life we don't understand why they are happening. But dear Lord, give us intelligence in the spirit to know that all things work together for good for them that love you and are called according to your purposes. And it is in your holy name, Jesus, that we have prayed and believed. Amen. My name is Pastor Tim Wangi, Life Church International Limuru. May God bless you. And may you show up in your palace in Jesus' name. Amen.